Hi there everybody. We hope you're all okay and taking care of yourselves. It's that part of the film and you know what's coming next. Why do fish live in salt water? Because Pepper makes them sneeze. <laughs> okay. Where do mice park their boats? On the hickory dickory dock. <laughs> On the dock. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> what kind of jungle cat is no fun to play games with? A cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a horse that lives next door? A neighbour. What time of day does a duck wake up? <laughs> At the quack of dawn. <laughs> it's not pleasing you lot, is there? So now I've got that out of my system. Today I'm going to be joined by Mrs Smith and we're going to be looking at this book. The Magpie Song. When I was young, er... Uh, there was a television program called Magpie and it was a lot like Blue Peter. I'm sure if you look on YouTube you or ask some your grandparents or older relatives they'll tell you about it. The show began with a song which was the poem and this book is based on that poem and it counts how many magpies can be seen at once and it goes one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl and four for a boy. Five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. So, this book, it's all about Carla and her granddad. And the story's told through letters that they send to each other because she lives in the city and granddad lives in the countryside. Again, stop rolling your eyes. When I was younger, the only way we had to communicate with each other if people lived a long, long way away, was to write letters to each other and, and post them. I used to write to someone in Oklahoma in America. Uh, and we were pen friends. I still write to him, but now via email, so it's much, much easier. I do still write letters, though, and I still enjoy receiving them as well. The letters written uh, by each character tells us what they're doing and what they're thinking because they can't see each other a little like the last few months in lockdown. Can you pick out the lines of the poem through each letter? Listen carefully and you'll see. Dear Grandad, it's noisy in the city. I can't sleep. When I look outside, I see a million orange lights below. I can hear police sirens, a dog barking and the television from next door. I thought about you far away in the country. Is it noisy there? Will you come and visit us one day? Will you write to me? Good night, Carla. Dear Clara, sometimes I can't sleep either, but it's the silence that keeps me awake. I look out of my window and see the black shapes of trees and clouds racing past the moon. When my eyes get used to the dark, I see the whole sky. It's full of so many stars. I wonder what it'd be like up there. I think about you too, high up in that flat of yours. I'd like to visit you one day, if I can. Send my love to everybody. Talk soon. Love, Grandad. Dear Grandad, I don't like it at school. I can't do anything right. Today Mum was late to collect me and Mrs Evans was cross. It was really cold waiting for the bus. It began to snow but it didn't make the ground all white, just muddy and grey. At home the lift wasn't working and we had to carry the shopping up all 574 steps to the flat. When we got in Dad had already gone to work. Did it snow where you are? Are there any wild animals in the woods? Love from Carla.
Dear Clara, just come in. Yes, it did snow here too. I'll tell you about that later. But first, first let's talk about school. If the work that you do at school is like the letters that you send to me, then you must be clever. Your dad never liked school either, but I taught him to carve wood and now he makes some wonderful, wonderful things. Everyone can do something well, everyone, and that includes you, my darling. Remember that, just you remember that. Ah, <sighs> Sarah, just come in. The woods are like a magic place, as white as the pages of a book. It tells you the whole story of the night before, if you know how to read it. The words are, are animal footprints. I could see a fox had been hunting and some deer had been in the garden. Ah, oh, there's a family of magpies nesting, you know, in the hollow tree by the house. Do you know the song? Has your dad never sung it to you? <laughs> it's, it goes, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl and four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. And guess what? There were three magpies today and three means three for a girl and when I came in whose letter should be on the doorstep and I thought about you lots of love darling <laughs> love granddad dear granddad there are wild animals in the city too dad told me he says when you weren't nice you see all kinds of things other people don't once he saw rats in the underground tunnel some people sleep down there too because they don't have anywhere to go. I asked Dad about the magpie song, but he said he didn't remember it. I've never seen a real magpie. Dad says he will make me a bird table for the balcony. Please come and see me soon. Love from Carla. Dear Grandad, why haven't you written? It's your turn to write. Carla. Dear Carla, I'm sorry I haven't written. I wasn't well. I'm a bit better now. It, it was so cold here. I had to stay in bed. Then I forgot to eat. And I slept for days and days. Guess what woke me up? A whole family of magpies were fighting by the hollow tree. There were so many I could hardly count. Seven, I think. Seven for a secret. They collect all kinds of things, all kinds of shiny things, and hide them in the tree. I'll tell you a secret, Carla. I've been hiding shiny things for a long time too. And one day, one day they'll all be yours. Don't tell anybody yet. When the time's right, they'll know. I'm carving a little magpie for you. And when it's finished, I'll send it. I'm all right. Don't be worrying about me. Hope school's going okay. All my love, Grandad. Dear Grandad, I'm sorry you weren't well. We've got a secret too. Mum's going to have a baby. I'm pleased, of course. But it means she won't be able to work for a long time and she's worried about the money. Dad doesn't get much work now either. Yesterday, Dad took me to see the lights and look in the shop windows. They were full of wonderful things. Do you think the baby will be a boy? I don't know where he'll sleep. We'll have to share my room. I like your secret. Please remember to eat. Love from Carla. Dear Carla. Yes, I heard about the baby. I'm so pleased for all of you. It will be born in the autumn. I wish you could all come and live here with me. There's plenty of room. 
But unfortunately, there's no work here for your dad. I want to visit you, Carla. I do. But I'm still not fit enough. I've finished the magpie that I carved for you. And now I'll paint it. But not just black and white. No, no, no. Magpies have a green and blue sheen to them when you look at them carefully. I'll send it to you when I've finished. Love to everybody, Grandad. Dear Grandad, thank you for the magpie. I love it. I carry it everywhere with me. Dad has been home all week. He seems so sad. He says there are too many bills to pay. I asked him about when he was a boy and he showed me a photo. He had long black hair, didn't he? He said he used to run through the woods like a wild animal. Do you remember? Today he's been making the bird table. It's just like a miniature house. I can't remember your house. Will you tell me about it? Love, Carla. Dear Carla, I'm writing this letter in bed because I haven't been well again. Yes, <laughs> your father had long black hair and he used to rush about as free as a magpie. <laughs> My hair, that was black too, but now it's more silver. <sighs> it's funny, it's funny. I'm sure I saw five magpies this morning and the song says five for silver. This is what the house is like. It's set into the side of the hill set back so the back windows are upstairs are just above the ground at the front it's long and a bit crooked it's very old you see very old there's ivy growing up the walls and the windows need painting <sighs> there are big oak trees all around you see that's where all the old magpies live when i see them up there i think about you up there on your balcony, high above the city. I wish you could fly here to see me. I'd like that very, very much. Love to you, from Grandad. Grandad, it's summertime now and you still haven't been. I hope you're not ill again. Have you been eating? Mum and Dad are at home all the time now. Yesterday a letter came. It said they might take the flat away if we don't find some money. I hear Mum and Dad talking about it at night. I get scared for us and the new baby. The birds have been coming to the table, but there isn't much food for them. Please write soon. Love, Carla. Dear Carla, there were four magpies this morning. And I knew that your brother had been born. I've got to go now. The doctor won't let me write any more. Don't forget our secret, will you? Don't forget our secret. Love to you and love to everyone. Grandad. Dear Grandad, something happened. I woke up early because the baby was crying. I looked out onto the balcony and there was a bird there, a big bird. It looked like a magpie. He looked at me. He seemed hungry. Perhaps he'd flown a long way. Perhaps he'd forgotten to eat. Then I remembered the magpie song, One for Sorrow. Grandad, I'm sad. You promised to come. Did you send the magpie instead? Love, Carla. Dear Grandad, I don't know why I'm writing. It's just habit, I suppose. We love the house. Dad mended the roof and painted the windows. He put the bird table in the garden. He spends a lot of time doing wood carvings now. This morning I heard him singing the magpie song. I'm older now, but when I run in the woods with my brother, I sometimes feel you are here, Carla. Dear Carla, 
if you're reading this letter, then you've found the secret. I knew you would. No one else would think to look in the magpie tree. I hope that you'll all be as happy as I've been living in this cottage. And if I know your dad, he'll have fixed everything up for you all now. Show him the box that's been in the tree. My treasure should help all of you. I carved six magpies on the lid. You know why. Be happy, always. And know that I love you, Grandad. Well, did you enjoy that? Did you find the lines of the poem in the letters? Most, if you think, are in the ones from Grandad and he could be a little bit cryptic sometimes. What do you think the treasure was? If you want a hint, think about what did six magpies signify? What will help Carla, do you think, remember Grandad? Anyway, this is just the first film. Mrs Smith's now going to talk to you about writing letters in her film. And to get ready for this, I thought I want you to actually have a little think and jot some ideas down. If you were to write a letter to someone you, you've not seen for a while, what would you want to tell them? Things like what you've been doing in lockdown, uh, how you've been feeling, funny things that might have happened or, or you've done, you know, you might want to ask them questions about what they've been doing and things. If you think about Carla, she asked questions of Grandad and like about his house and, and Grandad then in his next letter actually described the house and things. She also gave advice to him as well about don't forget to eat, look after yourself and all those kind of things. So jot some ideas down and listen to Mrs Smith on her film telling you about letter writing and then you might be able to use some of those ideas that you've got down. Okay, well that's it. Keep well, look after yourselves and keep smiling. Bye.